Here are the horoscopes for the week of the 5th to the 11th of September 2016. We are in the middle of a Mercury retrograde in Virgo. So Mercury continues to go backwards in Virgo until the 22nd of October, which is the autumn equinox. So we're very much in a wrapping up phase now because the autumn equinox is when we go from Virgo to Libra when the sun passes over that point and we actually go into the sunset, into the darker months of the year, into the winter. And this calls us inwards. So with Mercury retrograde, we're being called inwards to our imagination, to where our thoughts come from and to the thought fields that we're tuning into. Virgo is opposite Pisces, which is this realm. It's the other realm. It's where we come from and where we go to. It's our dream state, our imagination, our meditation place. So we're being called across from all this activity in Virgo because this week we've got the Sun, Mercury and Jupiter all in Virgo. And opposite we have Neptune in Pisces. So with a Mercury retrograde, we're looking at the intuition. We're looking at the imagination. We're looking at the bigger picture, the 95% beyond the physical senses and where those thought forms come from and come through us. What inspiration do we receive and where does that start to create reality as we think and speak and act it into the physical plane? So a very dreamy week with Mercury retrograde going to opposition against Neptune and calling us across into those evocative waters. So our real intelligence is in ourselves, it's our emotional intelligence and our intuition. We're very much driven in this world to be outward and productive and to try and control with the rational mind. And yet with the recent new moon opening up a two week window in Virgo, we are able to explore the connection between our thoughts and our emotions, between our conscious and our subconscious mind. There may be a little bit more sleep required as we recalibrate towards the autumn equinox as well. So it's a really good idea to make lots of rest time and not to set intentions just yet under that new moon. Because with Mercury retrograde, we're better off going back to the source of our motivations for what we'd like to create rather than just keep creating for the sake of it. So this is a good time to revise our plans. Sometimes we can be pushing towards something that we decided a while ago which won't get us the results or reap us the harvest that we want because we've not gone back to the core fundamental roots of that desire to check whether that's still relevant, whether that would lead us in the right direction. So a retrograde is a very good thing because it gives us a chance to go back and make the adjustments necessary so that when Mercury turns forward over the autumn equinox, we'll actually be on point, we'll be heading in the right direction with more precision and more clarity. So the big problem that we have with Mercury Retrograde is everybody's been taught control, that we control things through our mind, which simply isn't true. We don't even know what our next thought's going to be, so how much can the mind really be in control of things? So being allowed to let go of control, to fall into the surrender of Neptune in Pisces is one of the big challenges for this week. And within those Pisces waters, in the realm of the imagination, that's where we are majestic. That's where we are actually creating on a much bigger soul level. So have a look at some soul plans. It doesn't all have to be physical and mental. Have a look at what you actually came here to be, to do, and over many lifetimes what your current journey is heading towards. Letting go of control means that we don't need to have a plan. We don't need to know just yet. Can you be happy in the confusion? Can you swim around in the waters, not knowing where you're going to go, but actually recalibrating and connecting with your heart and what your heart's desire is? So a very tricky one for those that don't like to let go of control, but just think about that. You do not know what your next thought is going to be. Therefore, how much is your mind actually in control anyway? We have to reconnect with our heart, our heart's desire, and what's really true on a bigger picture before we start stepping forwards and making more work for ourselves in the outside world. 
but there's another reason not to step forwards just yet and to actually look back. We've got a longer period to look back now. In uh, September, normally, we look back over the year as we get to the harvest and we start to decide which seeds we want to plant, and that certainly will be the case once Mercury goes direct by the end of the month. We can start to put our plans into action, hopefully from that deeper place. But before that, we have Jupiter moving from Virgo into Libra. Now this will happen around the 9th of September, but we have a summing up of a last 12 year cycle. Very, very important 12 year cycle to look back upon. So trace it back. What did you begin 12 years ago? What journey have you walked? Again, our rational mind will nearly always jump to physical, tangible things on the outside, like moving house or starting a course or starting a new job, something visible, something touchable. But for me, what I've found is it's nearly always an inward journey. You may have begun a new way of thinking a new belief system, a new healing modality, a new connection with others, a new way of seeing yourself, a new way of viewing the world and your place in it. So try and take that inwards as well as outwards. You might be able to see the markers of what manifested on the outside, but have a look back over 12 years. What journey has your soul been on and what fruits have you harvested from the seeds that were sown? Because up until the 9th, we've got a chance to leave behind now anything that we don't want to take forwards. As Jupiter moves into Libra, we will be in a completely different dynamic for the whole of the next year. So it's worth having a look at what is it that you've learnt. Taking the seed of awareness forwards, but not dragging all the baggage. Being able to let go of anything that's falling away. Jupiter tends to come and clear away to make a broad horizon, to make a wide path in front of us. So instead of planning forwards because of this Mercury retrograde aspect, maybe have a look backwards this week and see philosophically whatever's falling away probably isn't supposed to come with you. And again, this can be beliefs as well as physical belongings or endings of jobs or relationships, that kind of thing. But we are called to surrender again, to let go Everybody will be starting a new journey with this aspect and everybody has the perfect right to follow their own path. So we had the beginning of the year was taking away all the stabilizers, all the external scaffolding, all the attachments so that we can live more freely. And this will be the end of that phase as we step over from Virgo into Libra on the 9th. But before that, to have a look and let go of anything that has served us so we let go with gratitude and surrender we let go with realization we don't have to carry friction and negativity forwards if we get the message of the lesson that was learnt so very much a harvest time very much a time for gratitude and abundance very much a time for housework and cleaning of that virgo archetype doing the inner housework and clearing out anything that's blocking us so that we can step forward to a wide horizon, free and ready to explore the next cycle. So what does Jupiter in Libra mean? We have had a whole year of Jupiter in Virgo, the seed to the harvest. It has been to do with productivity and creativity and how we work as a team and connect with nature and reap the rewards of our labours, how we actually can tidy up our own inner house and become clean and ready for the next cycle so as we step over into Libra we'll feel a calibration we'll feel a shift of energy from the 9th to the 10th and onwards Libra is about balance equinox is equal night so we come to the time of year where the night and day are equal we come to the time of year where we need to find the balance from the outer to the inner as we go for the first six signs of the zodiac are the outer and then the next six are the inner. So we're heading inwards into the winter to find that balance. We also find the balance of masculine and feminine as Aries opposite is ruled by Mars and that's the rising masculine active principle. And then as the sun sets in Libra ruled by Venus, we go to the inward feminine principle. So a good time for that balance of masculine and feminine. 
Libra is said to be the sign of relationships and this is often taken a little bit too literally and we start to delve straight into ourself and other romance that kind of thing but first and foremost Libra is the union of your lower and higher self of your inner and outer self so it's that going inwards to find the bigger self to find that union within so Aries has very much an I am energy and Libra has a we are energy as we find the balance deep within our heart that's why it's ruled by Libra is going back into the heart to totally balance ourselves up after all the cleaning out work of Virgo and to make peace with ourselves to fall in love with ourselves and to find and embrace our divinity so this energy will be around for a whole year until next summer so we've got a chance to find that flow Libra is an air sign and all the air signs like a little bit of space so that they can flow so if we do look at relationships we'll be looking at soul to soul we'll be looking at unconditional love we'll be looking at where I am and you are and where we can both flow together realizing that it's the vibration of the heart that actually attracts partners and soul connections and if we keep our heart on its true vibration and others do the same then we can flow and recreate relationships climbing out of the quagmire of romance and sickly sweet dependency into a more responsible and a more harmonic way of relating so really this is a week of two halves looking backwards over the last year looking backwards to the last 12 years right up until Friday and then stepping over that threshold and going on a new journey as Jupiter goes into Libra and finding that balance as we head towards the weekend. So those are the horoscopes for this week and I'll see you next week. It's very important to find out where this Virgo Libra cusp is for you in your chart as all of our charts are oriented in different directions. So if you would like to come to me for a reading to have a look at where we can reconnect with your soul purpose so that when Mercury goes direct you can step forwards in majesty then I am available for a Skype reading or one to one in Camden. Or well, this is one of the topics that we're discussing in the online members groups. So you can post up your chart and come and join us there and actually start to figure this out for yourself with some help in a warm hearted group. But if you'd like to work on your own a little bit more, then I do have my online courses. And this is a great time of year to go back to school and to set yourself a plan of inner discovery. So there's the full year long course and some short modules as well, where you can start to learn this wonderful subject for yourself. So for any of that, please do contact me, zoehind7 at gmail.com.